You're listening to Health Professional Radio. Thank you for joining. I'm your host, Neil Howard. I'm going to have a conversation with Dr. Daniel Catanacci, Director of Gastrointestinal Oncology Program at the University of Chicago. He's joining us on the program to talk about a Stella's Phase Two FAST study. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Catanacci. Thank you for joining. Thank you for having me. Uh, give us a little bit of your professional background and talk about your experience in gastric cancer space. Sure. I'm, uh, as you heard, the, the director of the GI oncology program here at the University of Chicago. Um, so we see all GI cancers, but my focus clinically and from a research perspective is really on gastroesophageal cancers. And um, that entails uh, seeing patients both in the curative intense setting, but also, unfortunately, since most patients present in the metastatic setting, um, in the palliative setting and the stage four setting. How prevalent is uh, gastric cancer and who's mostly uh, impacted? So gastric cancer, uh, gastroesophageal cancer, I really think of as sort of three subgroups. Um, one is esophageal cancer, that is squamous cell. That's really not in the conversation here, and that's usually associated with smoking, drinking, and actually decreasing in incidence in the United States. Then there's the GE junction adenocarcinomas, which includes esophageal adenocarcinoma, GE junction, and the cardia, the top of the stomach. And that's actually increasing in incidence um, substantially here in the United States over the last decades, associated with uh, chronic reflux, obesity, um, uh, diabetes, Caucasian, Western diet, etc. And then gastric cancer proper, the far end of the distal gastric cancer, as we call them, um, are associated mostly with a H. pylori infection and other exposures like nitrosamines and delimates, both of which, uh, since we've recognized that um, exposure, that um, that is also decreasing in incidence in the United States. Is treatment historically similar for each of these, or is it vastly different for each? Treatment from a perspective, especially in the metastatic setting, we sort of lump together G-junction adenocarcinomas uh, and esophageal adenocarcinomas with gastric cancer adenocarcinomas, whereas squamous cells are treated somewhat differently. And so uh, we sort of lump it together as gastroesophageal adenocarcinomas, and they're treated um, for the most part uh, diff the same way, even though we understand the differences in etiology and uh, even in molecular subgroups underlying that. But the, together, they're sort of lumped together. Now, this uh, Estella's uh, Phase two FAST study, give us some insight into that study with the, the compounds and the uh, specific disease that it was um, looking into. Yeah, so the, the Phase two FAST study was conducted in Europe, um, and it was uh, looking at a backbone chemotherapy that's not used as much anymore with um, epirubicin, um, triplet therapies, platinum, and, and fluoropyrimidine. Um, and it was a randomized controlled study, placebo-controlled, um, with a drug called Zolbituximab, an anti-clotin antibody, um, in patients that had been selected to have at least 40% of cells expressing clotin. And so that, that is thought to be about 30 to 35% of patients. And so that study um, was a, a study done, um, you know, several years ago now, and that showed an outcome that was um, primary endpoint of, of survival, which was improved. So both progression-free survival and overall survival were, were improved. And then most importantly, I think that at a higher cutoff level of 70% of cells staining, that was where the outcome was really pronounced and, and the median overall survival, for example, of 16 and a half months. So um, that was a very promising study for these patients with gastroesophageal adenocarcinoma and um, it has um, implications on, on the future in, in respect to future studies that are phase three studies to confirm that result. So what would you say is the main reason that these findings uh, were important to patients? Well, the median overall survival of, of a newly diagnosed stage four or unresectable gastroesophageal adenocarcinoma, historically, that was HER2 negative, which was a criteria here for the study, um, is less than 12 months. And so um, to improve the median survival, progression-free survival, improved response rate um, is, is important because that has not been done, you know, in the last decades for, with multiple different studies failing at that attempt. In addition, I think the other importance of this is the, the secondary publication coming out of this study, which was uh, regarding patient-reported outcomes, showing that um, the, the tolerability of the agent did not sort of have a detriment in quality of life. And in fact, the way the study was designed was after the chemotherapy period of induction up to eight cycles, 
um, patients continued on either the zolbituximab or placebo, and patients actually had a, a better uh, quality of life for those who were randomized to the zolbituximab arm. So in addition to improving survival and other clinical outcomes, it also it, it maintained an improved uh, um, quality of life as assessed by patient reported outcomes. Talk a bit about the potential biomarkers in uh, gastric cancers. Yeah, the, the clodidine point two um, protein is a, is a tight junction protein that keeps cells together, and it's known to be overexpressed in various cancers, and, and including gastric uh, cancers. And so, um, as we heard, the selection criteria was overexpression of this protein to be eligible, and, um, and, and it's specifically at highest levels of, of 70% or higher, where it's, again, estimated around 30 to 35% of patients will have this. Um, this is a, a, a selection bi um, a biomarker for, for benefit to this drug, and the antibody which binds directly to that protein is thought to function through enhancing an immune modulatory um, component through antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity, or ADCC, um, by recruiting in um, natural killer cells and other immune, immune components to uh, uh, effectively control the cancer. Are there any other studies that are underway or being uh, considered at this time? Yeah, so based on this FAST study, we now have two ongoing prospective phase three studies globally. Um, one is the Spotlight study, which is a randomized study of full FOX chemotherapy, which is now a, a, a standard uh, chemotherapeutic regimen um, backbone for first line uh, patients um, and with or without zolbituximab that is placebo controlled. And again, it's selecting based on um, high clodin expression, so the highest levels of expression. And um, then there's a parallel study um, with the GLOW study, which is uh, similar in design, but it has the backbone of CAPOX, so capecitabine and oxaliplatin, and again, randomized controlled with zolbituximab placebo, um, and it is also ongoing globally. Well, give us a website where we can learn more, if you would. AstellisOncology.com would be the website to go to. Well, I thank you for joining us here on the program. Thank you, and I'm hoping that uh, we'll have an opportunity to speak again. It is my pleasure. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au.